You know I tell you something about me. I went to the autistic kid 15 years ago. Autistic kids is reincarnation, it's not regular people. After a few times I went to him, there's very holy souls. I asked him who I was in my previous life. Do you know what he told me? Now, this is the first time I think I ever say it in a lecture. You have the schut to hear it from the source for being so nice and patient. <laughs> what is it? He told me, you, you lived in Iraq, Iraqi Jew, and when the Zionists came to Iraq and opened a secular school, boys and girls, a hundred years ago, you went and convinced people from the yeshivot to go to the Zionist Israeli schools, which was anti-religion, communist. You made a lot of religious people go to the secular school. So Hashem gave you a chance to send you back to save souls, just the opposite of what you did. You understand? The autistic kid told me this. And I tell you one more thing. The autistic kid told me, I want you to bring your wife next week. So I said, what do you need for my wife? He said to me, your wife has a question that bothers her very much, and only I can answer this question to her. So I come to my wife, I say, I'm sorry, we have to go to Brooklyn, two and a half hours ride. She said, what? I said, the autistic kid invited you. <laughs> she was very nervous. She said, you have a question. She's thinking, what question I have? I don't know, don't mess with him, it's a divine soul. We went to Brooklyn. As soon as she walked to the hallway to the house, before she sat on a chair, you know, they're not connected, you know. Yeah. They go like this, the hand goes like this on the letters, they type. He said, hello, Mrs. Mizrahi, it's an honor you came to my house. Your granddaughter is a very big tzaddik, like this. I wanted, believe me, it was a week after. He already knew who she is before she said hello, nothing. Right away, he started to type. And he said, I ask your husband to bring you here because I know there's a question that bothers you very much. So she's like in shock there. You always thinking, my husband is running around so many years and making so many people religious, and what am I? A regular housewife, raising children, cooking, laundry. He's gonna get in Olam Abba all the reward. And what's the difference between me and all the other religious girls? Same thing. So I want you to know, that's not how it works. Everything the husband achieve, his wife get just as much. And Hashem put you and him in Egypt. They call America Egypt, before the end to try to save as many souls as possible before time runs out. That was the end of it. I asked her, did you really think like this? She said, absolutely. Do you understand what's going on here? <sighs> Times is running out. And by the way, in that session, he told me the Arabs are about to attack Israel. The, black, the sky is black. There are black clouds all over us. My heart is crying for what's going to happen. And the Intifada started right after. The Arabs exploded and their bombs, buses were going everywhere. He was already telling me this. And I took another, another man over there, a good friend of mine that was married. Now Baruch Hashem is happily married to a kosher woman. He was married to a woman. And as soon as he came to the room, the autist told him, get rid of the despicable thing in your house. So my friend told him, I don't have a television. <laughs> he said, that's not what I meant. He said, I don't have any statues. He said, that's not what I meant. I don't have any magazines. That's not what I meant. I don't have any bad pictures. He's thinking, what does he mean? So that's not what I meant. So then he said to him, do you mean my wife? So he told him, your wife is not a wife. He's a wife of another man. <laughs> Think about it. He sits in front of him. So he looks at me, this guy, he says, I know it. Like this, in fire, I knew it all alone. So he said, he said to him, your wife faked a get and marry you. Her, her previous husband never gave her a get. She took a person with phony ID to the bed in and was here in Florida. 
some kind of conservative bed in. I don't know exactly what the story was. If I remember, it was here or in LA. She came, they got married, and all alone she's married to another man who never gave her a get. You understand? This is an autistic soul. They know things. They're not like us. We have a free choice. We're in the middle of a test. They're already connected to Hashem in a very high level. You know, I've been speaking about these things for 15 years. Then I have critics. The more you're successful, the more you have critics. So my critic says on me, he's insulting the autistic kids. He hurts their feeling. He calls them wicked. <laughs> Everything the opposite. I'm the first one in the world who published them to the whole world. Everyone knows what they know from my lectures. It's all over about them. Most people didn't know. Yeah, there's some books about them. But people who never read the book, they learned it from my lectures. And in the end, they say he's putting the autistic kids down and hurting their feelings. Why? Because I say that they're almost perfect, that they have very little to correct, and they go to heaven? It's nonsense. But th by the way, I told you, the autistic kid told me, I suffer a thousand tortures a minute. So I told him, I feel very bad for you. He said, don't feel bad for me. Feel bad for yourself. I'm very close to my correction. You people are very far from it. Everything according to the Torah. That's called reincarnations. You see an autistic kid, how much he suffers, how much he's going through. You feel horrible. And in the end, he laughs at you. He says, <laughs> I'm 99% finished. I'm going to heaven soon, another year or two. You still have a long way to correct. It's the opposite. If you don't learn Torah and you don't know the secrets, you have millions of questions. The more you learn, the more you get answers. The more you get answers, it's easier to be religious. Ena ma'aretz chasid, the Gemara say. Cannot be righteous without being educated in Torah. The only nation that to be an ignorant person is a crime is the Jewish nation. You can be an ignorant Muslim, it's not a crime. An ignorant Christian, it's not a crime. An ignorant Jew, the Torah says it's a crime. Am Haaretz, if I tell you what the Gemara says about Am Haaretz, maybe you run to the yeshiva for a year straight, all of you. But the Gemara speaks very strictly against it. That was maybe a sign that we have to say thank you very much and we'll see you soon.